Hear that? That's the sound of a patient whose health data is protected from a cyber attack. And that, that's the sound of a financial system that's digitally secured from bad actors. Right now, there's an invisible war being fought on a digital battlefield that impacts what we do every day. That's why at Paraton, we do the can't be done to help protect the vital systems we rely on. Because if we don't, the alternative is unimaginable. Paraton. Welcome to the Christian O'Connell Show podcast. We're back, so is this. There's no business like show business. I made 1,000 sandwiches for the Queen and she did not eat a single one. Kiefer Sutherland borrowed a cigarette lighter from my friend. So I had to tell Eric Banner that we were out of sticky date pudding. Christian O'Connell's weakest claim to fame. Oh, I forgot about that. Still gets me. All right, what have you got then? Uh, your weakest claim to fame. 94141043. Zach, good morning. Good morning, Christian. Zach, okay, your weak claim to fame. My weak claim to fame is I went and saw Michael Buble in concert, Rod Laver Arena, when I was about seven years old. I was down the bottom, where the, like the, I would suppose you call it the mosh pit. And I don't I think a for Michael Buble, no. At a Buble <laughs> yeah, gig. No, what no, a scene. <laughs> Mainly middle aged women throwing their knickers at him. <laughs> And I was, um, I was standing on a chair at the back, and he came out on, like, a circular sort of platform. And I was waving my hands with him, and uh, I remember him specifically pointing at me and winking mid-song. Specifically <laughs> pointing at you, you, child. Yeah, no, the the buble wink. Else. No, not yeah. you old dears. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is like when Pat's claimed that Brian Adams no, winked at her. I had witnesses right. just back off. <laughs> Huggy was there oh, and wow, called wait, it. Oh, wow, what a witness. Called it. Yeah, okay. Oh. I had interviewed him earlier in the day and obviously made such a big impression. He did. <laughs> All right. Uh, Zach, thank you very much for your call. No worries. Thank you. She's hanging on to that story, isn't she? Oh, forever. Uh, Spirit of Big Red came through her then. <laughs> Knock you over friends. Uh, Deb, good morning. Hi, how are you going? I'm good, Deb. So your weakest claim to fame? I did the nut bush with Carly Minogue, Jason Donovan and Molly Meldrum. Wow, that's quite a uh, trio there. And uh, how come, Deb? Oh, we were at one of the nightclubs in about, oh, no, 1986 perhaps, something around that era. At one of the, uh, I think it was called The Underground in King Street in Melbourne. We were from the country at the time, so it was a big deal to see them there. And I think she just started on Neighbours. Yeah, uh, she was looking glamorous in her red and white cow print uh, leather outfit, and Molly in his red silky shirt. Anyhow, the nutbush came on, and they all jumped up, and we all ran down, and we actually got to be right beside them awesome. doing the nutbush, and right. it was just awesome. Lovely, back Debbie. in the days of the big hair perms and yep. so forth. Very glam. Ah, oh, lovely, <laughs> Debbie. Thank you for sharing your story. Take care. No problem at all. Bye. Margaret. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Good. Everyone good morning, says good Margaret. morning. World says good morning, Margaret. <laughs> uh, my weakest claim to fame was that I was rescued from walking into traffic on a busy London street by Michael Caine. That is, this is a claim to fame. So what, what did he say? Well, I was standing on a traffic island in, this is the late 90s, um, on a very busy London street, and I was just about to walk into traffic. I wasn't looking where I was going. And a pair of arms just grabbed me and pulled me back up into the island. And I'm face to face with Michael Caine, like he's got both my arms. And like an absolute idiot, I blurted out, I've just read your book and I think you're wonderful. And um, he said, thank you very much. And with that, let go of me. And um, Sounds like he was pushing you back in the traffic. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oh, it's one of those super fans. Oh, Oh, dear. (laughs) Well done, miss one of these. (laughs) I was very, very starstruck. (laughs) (laughs) Margaret, that's a great story. You were saved by Michael Caine. This is the Christian O'Connell Show podcast. Do you have... A very weak claim to fame. We look for them every Wednesday on the show. 94141043. Let's uh, take a few more calls before the news of Patsy. Steve, good morning. Good morning. All right, Steve, what's your weakest claim to fame? My weakest claim to fame is I was standing beside Richard Branson on the fence line of the Melbourne airport when the very first A380 came into Melbourne in 2005. 
It's a shame mm. that Richard Branson was at the fence line. <laughs> they didn't let him in. <laughs> no, exactly. Don't care who you are, Sir Richard Branson. You're not coming in. Your name's not on the list. I am the airline. <laughs> <laughs> My name's on the plane. Yeah, yeah okay, mate. Over there. Uh, why was he at the fence line, Steve? Well, it was publicised in the media that uh, that it was going to have its first test flight into Melbourne. And uh, so there's, uh, it was on the keel or end of the runway, and uh, a lot of public people turned up, and all of a sudden uh, people started whispering, you know, that's Richard Branson, Branson. that's Richard Branson. Look at the beard, it's him. And, and uh, he had this huge telescopic camera, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, he, he took He needed it, he's in the fence line. <laughs> yeah, he was on the fence line with us in the public. And uh, not one single person approached him because obviously us Aussies are so polite when it comes to celebrities. Sure. But uh, um, it was the it was the very first flight that had A three eighty written on the tail, and it was a, it wasn't a passenger plane; it was a cargo plane. It was just a test flight, just to see how it would uh, perform on the on the um, on end. the runway. <laughs> yeah. So, Steve, this wasn't even a Virgin plane. No, it wasn't. Oh, I didn't know he was a plane it spotter. <laughs> it was. Oh, I'll put it in my notebook. It's a keynote end. <laughs> I'll take a photo of this when I'm building my own planes. I'll use it. <laughs> <laughs> to think that that man was uh, sending people into space now, I think it's, um, like, um, that's my claim to fame. Well, he's I'm still like, using wow, that long-range telescope to wave to them. Keylor <laughs> <laughs> <Keeler> ends. <laughs> uh, Steve, that's a great one. Running really made us laugh. Thank you very much. Have a good day, buddy. Yeah. You too. Bye bye. Donna, good morning. Hello, how are you? Richard oh, <laughs> Branson, that keen or end. Uh, Donna, what's your weakest claim to fame? My weakest claim to fame is that my uncle made the wedding cake from the movie The Castle with the one with the kickboxer on top. Awesome. Oh, what a gr- <laughs> that's a, that's a great claim to fame. Yeah, I thought I think it's pretty great, but he's still pretty weak. <laughs> no, 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 it's amazing. You you can see that cake, can't you? Yeah, the kickboxer. Um, yeah. That's amazing. Donna, thank you very much for your call. John. Yeah, g'day, mate. John, we're all ears. Now, my producer has warned me, saying, you know, this is a sensitive story about the que- well, the late Queen, formerly Queen of England. So what's your story? Well, it's a bit of a weak one, Christian, uh, but um, I actually busted her checking out my beehive. She's barely buried. <laughs> you know. And Ben is uh, a caller only a minute ago said, uh, us Aussies are very polite to celebrities, until they're dead. <laughs> and then apparently they're eyeing up your behind. Yeah. The Queen was eyeing up your backside. And now you tell this story after she comes. Yes. Corroborate. Yeah. Defend this. <laughs> <laughs> so where was this? Well, it's the Commonwealth Games in Melbourne. Um, I was working as a waiter at a luncheon for all the delegates. And she was in attendance, and um, everyone just couldn't take their eyes off her. And at one moment, I was uh, bending over a table at full stretch, <laughs> uh, presenting, as they say. Yeah, yeah. And no, I'm um, doing, yeah. I looked, I looked over my shoulder, and I saw her, and I saw where her eyes were pointing. <laughs> and she looked up, and she looked me in the eyes, and she realised that I'd caught her. Yeah. And she just gave me the most amazing smile. And you know what, Christian? <laughs> if she had it asked. I would have obliged. <laughs> <laughs> this is incendiary. This is incredible. <laughs> oh, I love the way that wrong. she just like didn't even look away, just held her yeah. eye. It was like, well, you know what? If you're going to present it, I'm going to see it. <laughs> and if I wasn't with Philip, I'd tap it. <laughs> John, this is an amazing story. <laughs> Just when we thought we'd heard all the stories there were about the Queen, but no, there was one remaining one. <laughs> John, we'll send you a prize. It's an incredible story. Thank you very much, mate. Very good. No worries. You look after that backside. On a brighter note, you're listening to the Christian O'Connell Show podcast.